Seattle, Seattle, Seattle. What's poppin'? It's Natasha Marin. I am a conceptual artist and a consultant. Um, I specialize in anti-racism and digital engagement, which happen to be pretty relevant right now. So if you'd like to hit me up for some consulting help, you can. I am reachable at nonwhiteworks.com. Today I've been asked to share a message with the whole city, which is a daunting task. And after much toiling and wringing of the hands and rending of the garments, I thought to myself, let me do what I do. And what I do is I try to make space for other voices every chance I can. And so with this space, with this platform today, I would like to make space for other black voices, uh, black voices that you need to be hearing uh, probably much more so than mine. So um, I'm going to read you a little bit from this book, Black Imagination. It's available everywhere where you can find books and it came out this year. First message comes to you from Ebo Barton of Seattle, Washington. And here is what Ebo says. In a world where I feel safe, valued, and loved, there would be skyscrapers filled with chairs where cisgender, able-bodied, affluent, straight, white men and women could take several seats for months at a time. We'd call them greenhouses to ensure their growth and sweat from sitting down. Black and indigenous women, trans women, our women, would burn down what they wished. After taking a long vacation from not having certain people around, lead what they wanted, appoint trustworthy rebuilders, masculinity would be checked and have its own skyscraper. I would live there for months. I would return to new society, unapologetically soft and willing. I would know growth and sweat. I would be unafraid to call myself man, to call myself transgender man. I would be a mixed black transgender man and still be soft and willing and not hated and not afraid. My art would be art and not always be brave. It wouldn't have to be political because of who I am. My art would be art and not always be activism when I wasn't even trying to be. My art would be happy sometimes. People would consume my art because it was art. I wouldn't need to put on my white woman voice to get bills paid or discounts or attention. I could just be myself and maybe not have to pay bills or need discounts, but I'll always need attention. In a world where I feel safe, valued, and loved, I could walk down the street in any neighborhood at any time and not wonder if it is my blackness, brownness, racial ambiguity, transness, gayness, or gender ambiguity that is killing me. And the last message I'd like to relay <laughs> also comes from Black Imagination. And this message comes to you from Reagan Jackson of Seattle, Washington. When asked, how do you heal yourself? Reagan responded, first, I listen. This is hard when my feelings are screaming, when my body, my heart, the pieces of me are aching. Sometimes it's easier to talk, to pray, to complain, to beg, to demand. I do these things too, but then I listen and I follow. There is a guiding star that talks to me. I don't know her name or even her language. Mostly, she is a dream walker of pictures, sounds, and feelings, and I awake knowing what is mine to do. Is she ancestor or unborn child? guardian angel, spirit guide, or interdimensional healing practitioner. I don't know. I just know that when I listen and I follow directions, healing happens. 
Sometimes there is a ceremony involved, candles or water, writing letters or burning pictures, the release of song or tears. At these times, I feel most acutely the loss of my cultural traditions. We, the children of the unchosen diaspora, the progeny of the stolen, the kidnapped, the shackled, the tortured, the enslaved, are in many ways still lost, lost to our heart language, lost to our indigenous practices. We pray to white Jesus, God of colonizers, and wonder why our prayers aren't answered. With no disrespect to Jesus, to Buddha, to Allah, or any of the gods who come round here, but we are the daughters not of Jacob and Abraham, but of Oshun. So long estranged, I can only listen and guess, make do with plastic cowrie shells and white fabric, pray in English, and hope that there is something beyond my colonized words, that some part of me is still me enough to be heard and healed anyway. And you can find more messages like these in the book, Black Imagination. And you should be listening to black people all the time, every chance you get. So with that, Seattle, go out there and be glorious in your lavender. <laughs>